Do I have everything? I don't even know. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a while since I recorded a video. I apologize for that. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Uh, today, I'm going to be taking a look at something that's uh, maybe a little bit old. It's uh, kind of stuff that's been around and been talked about for maybe the last year and a half. But it's new to me, so um, I thought maybe I could try to bring maybe an updated uh, perspective onto the topic. But uh, without sort of beating around the bush anymore, today I'm going to be talking about um, uh, recording media uh, and SSDs, uh, using SSDs to record to um, the Ursa Mini, uh, Ursa Mini Pro, Ursa Mini 4.6K, uh, whatever the case is. So like I said, there, this is kind of a topic that's been around uh, basically ever since, I guess, the advent of the, of the cameras, the Ursa cameras, um, and, they, and their reliance on CFast 2.0 media. The reason being is that CFast 2.0 media is uh, still, and especially back then, uh, was very, really, really expensive. Lately, there have been more companies uh, releasing CFast 2.0 cards, and, and some of the prices, some prices have been trending downward, but they're still, by and large, uh, way more expensive than really C uh, SSDs, for instance, or um, SD cards, you know, at, at the same capacity or similar capacities. And another issue is that with the Blackmagic cameras in particular, uh, there are uh, recommended cards. Uh, so if you want to use basically all the recording functions, resolutions, codecs, whatever you want to call it, uh, you need to stick with the recommended card list. So for instance, I have this Delkin Devices 256 gig card. This, is, this costs 300 bucks and uh, it's not on the recommended list and it doesn't record uh, RAW 4.6K um, raw losses 4.6k. So if you try to record raw losses 4.6k with this card, um, it will cut out and stop recording uh, pretty quickly. So let me go ahead and just try this real quick. Uh, here you can see uh, in slot one I've got the SSD and in slot two I've got the Delkin uh, CFast 2.0 card. And my project settings here you can see at 23.98 as uh, my frame rate, raw lossless, 4.6K. And um, let's switch over to card number two. Card two. Um, okay, so you can see that's highlighted. And we're just gonna let this run, see how long it'll go before dropping frames. All right, so just over 13 seconds. Okay, so that's an issue. So like I said, without using one of the recommended cards, if you wanna take full advantage of the camera, you're gonna need the extremely expensive uh, CFast 2.0 card. So like I said, this 256 gig was $300. And if you want one from the recommended media list, it's gonna cost at least, I would say at least 600 bucks, if not more. So that's why people from the get-go have been looking for alternatives to CFast 2.0 cards. There are a couple different options if you want to record to SSDs with Ursa Mini. So you can go this route, which is kind of like the Frankenstein setup, where you've got a couple different components. So you've got a, a CFast 2.0 to SSD breakout cable. So basically this just looks kind of like a dummy CFast card, but it's essentially just a, a SATA six gig um, data connector. And then, <clears throat> and that retails for about, right now on Amazon for about $56 plus shipping. So around $60, $65 plus shipping and tax, I guess. And then um, you're gonna need an SSD. So I got a Samsung 860 Evo, one terabyte, and this was $280. So $20 cheaper than the 256 gig CFast 2.0 card and this is one terabyte. Price per gig is way less than CFast 2.0. Um, and then you're gonna wanna smash your camera on the chair. Uh, this this uh, piece, so this is a, basically a hard drive enclosure. This is optional, but this kind of makes it easier as far as just attaching and powering the SSD. So this is a good one, it's uh, StarTech.com, and it comes with a lot of different uh, power options. So I've got a USB to basically 12 volt, or I guess five volt uh, power um, adapter, and it comes with that cable. Additionally, it comes with a couple different cables, but another one that's sort of relevant is this one. So this one you can plug um, the SSD, the hard drive enclosure directly into your PC to transfer data from it. So you could essentially like 
use it as an external hard drive and edit directly from the SSD or just transfer the files onto another hard drive in your computer. So those are the two main cables that for me are essential and it comes with it. And this is about $33 on Amazon as well. So for a hundred bucks, basically you get the hardware that you're gonna need to run an SSD instead of a CFast. And then on top of that, however much money you wanna spend on, on SSDs. Now you can get multiple enclosures. So if you say you have a couple of different SSDs that you use for recording media, you can get a couple of these. Um, if not, then you're gonna have to switch out. Um, it takes two screws. Of course, you could rig it up a diff couple different ways if you wanted to be able to like quick switch out the SSDs, I suppose. But like I said, you don't have to get an enclosure. You could just mount the SSD directly onto the camera somehow, but then you're gonna have to figure out a way to power it. Um, so you're gonna have to get like a SATA power to USB power or SATA power to like DTAP, some sort of adapter. Um, as you can see here, it's powered directly from the battery. You could power it potentially from the battery plate if you've got a battery plate that has a USB power as well. Okay, so let's talk about other options. So in the intervening year and a half, there's been a couple different options aside from this uh, setup here. Uh, there was a company that kickstarted a, an SSD adapter for the Ursa Mini, uh, ATOC, um, I think is the company name. And it's basically like a, a kind of a big box that you can actually put two SSDs into. And it has basically the same interface where you've got two um, CFAST to set up, set up breakout cables, and then they go directly into the box. And then the box is also likewise powered either via the battery or the, uh, the battery plate. Mounting that is, is a little bit, it's kind of bulky. So it's kind of a big boxy rectangle thing. So I've seen a lot of people mounting it to the handle, uh, which could work. So that's an option. The problem with that one, even as it's right now, if you go to b &H, it's $600 for that adapter. Um, there are some other ones that have popped up on eBay, uh, mainly from China, that also has two SSD slots and same interface. Um, however, this one will mount directly to the back of the camera, and then you'll mount the battery plate onto the back of it, and then your battery. Um, so that's kind of cool because it's all self-contained, kind of like on the back of the camera, like this setup is. Additionally, it has two SSDs. Um, and it's so it's like 400 less than $400. The problem that I see with that one is just customer service. So if there's some issue with it, if it stops working, you're going to wait a while. It takes a couple weeks for it to ship to you. So you're going to have to ship it back and then they're going to ship you a replacement potentially, but who knows how they're going to, I don't know if they're going to stand by their products or not. I mean, I really don't know. I'm not going to say one way or the other, but you just have the issue of contacting them, uh, language barriers and also just shipping costs and shipping time with, with that one. And then additionally, there is Blackmagic has released its own SSD adapter. Uh, likewise, attaches to the back of the camera. Now, the cool thing with that one is it doesn't have an additional, um, it doesn't interface with the CFAST um, slot. It actually interfaces with the SDI in and out on the back of the camera. So the problem with that it's basically taking up another SDI out. So you can still have a uh, some sort of external device and uh, use this SDI out, but if you wanna use the viewfinder, then you can't do that. So it's kind of like a one, one or the other type thing. Um, additionally, if you can't use the SDI in, uh, so if there's any, if you have any sort of use case for that, then that's, that kind of goes out the window. Um, I think there might be some sort of adapters or workarounds for that. The thing also with the Blackmagic is that it only has one SSD. So if you want to use dual SSDs, you can't do it with that one. Why would you want to use two SSDs? So uh, you still cannot, um, as it stands now, record raw lossless 60 frames per second, 4.6K. But if you do want to do um, 60 frames per second in raw lossless, even with a CFast 2.0 card, uh, Blackmagic says you need two. Uh, so it basically just is writing like at a RAID zero, like it'll write one frame to one card, the second frame to another card. So it's basically splitting the workload between two cards. So that's why those um, other options, the ATOC and the other Chinese brand that give you the op opportunity to slot in two SSDs at the same time, you can do 60 frames per second raw lossless 4.6K. You could do it with this setup as well. You just get another SSD. Um, you're gonna have to f do another, you're gonna have to power it somehow either through the DTAP on the battery or um, through the battery uh, plate itself, uh, but you could do it. You could do it. Now I was curious to see if I could do um, dual slot recording with these two, but it doesn't seem to work. So I switched it to on, and you can see that it's now both are highlighted. Whoops. Uh, so we're still in 60 frames, and see what happens here.
yeah, it went 17 seconds, but it still dropped frames. So for whatever reason, uh, dual slot recording won't work here. I don't know if it's because it needs both, uh, both recording media maybe have to be the same, um, but I'm not really sure. To me, like 60 frames per second, raw 4.6K lossless isn't a big deal because your file sizes and the data rates are so massive. I think sacrificing, um, you know, having a lossless is not such a big trade-off in terms of the high frame rates. Even with a Delkin 256 gigabyte card, if you do ProRes, there's no problem with that card in ProRes. You can record any uh, resolution, any frame rate in ProRes, and there's no, no issues with drop frames. But overall, so in terms of negatives with this set, so I really, I mean, it really solved kind of the major issue for me is, is basically the price of media. Additionally, it solved the secondary problem of not being able to record 4.6K raw lossless. Um, that's something that you, you know, might not want to do all the time, but just having the option to do it, um, you definitely want to take advantage of the camera um, to its fullest extent. Some of the downsides, so you have this additional cabling that you sort of have to figure out. To me, it hasn't been um, a problem yet. If you ever look at like Hollywood, like production, see the cameras that they're using, they're massive. They've got like stuff hanging all over the top of them and off to the sides and the back. And um, there's all sorts of additional components and wiring and stuff that's going on with them. So this really isn't that big a deal, especially since it's the cabling is sort of internal here. The SSD isn't exposed. If you accidentally pull this out, the most you're going to damage is the external um, enclosure and not the SSD itself. You do have the problem that you can't shut the door, which also isn't really a big deal because if you're ever operating the camera using the LCD, the door's open and your media is exposed. Um, so that to me isn't a, isn't a big issue. One problem that I could foresee is that with this battery in particular, uh, the power outputs are here on the top and you can see how this could interfere um, with your SDI connections if you wanted to use them. So in the future, if I were to get uh, batteries, I would definitely look for batteries that had the power inputs at the bottom to avoid that. Another issue is when you handhold the camera, a lot of times I have the camera kind of pressed against my chest. So now the SSD is pressed against my chest and there might be some sound problems like with the Velcro kind of um, doing that, but otherwise there's really not much of a downside to it. Considering that you're getting faster media for much cheaper, I can definitely deal with it. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Am I still recording? No, I'm not recording. Oh, I guess another thing, uh, I wonder if this setup would work uh, for, the, for a Canon's uh, C200 or C300 Mark II, both of which use CFast 2.0. So if you guys are interested in knowing that, let me know and I'll try to get my hands on. I know I can get a C300 Mark II, um, I don't know anyone with a C200, but um, let me know if you want to, if you are, are curious about that. I haven't ever seen anybody talk about using these kind of setups for the Canon cameras, so maybe it's kind of a moot issue. So if no one gives a shit, then I don't, I guess I won't bother with it. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. Sorry for rambling. See you later.